Hello, my name's Ed from Suffolk and Norfolk Outdoors and I'd like you to welcome you aboard my fishing boat. Um, Alaska, she is a mid 80s Shetland Alaska 500, um, fairly heavy layup, well built and um, I've got a bit of a soft spot for her. Problem is, she's got a bit of a soft spot in the floor. Uh, she's got a bit of a rot spot and the floor over time has started to bounce a bit when we're moving on it, there's no cracks, there's no snaps. Um, however, it's something that um, I'm gonna have to investigate and to, quite simply, to fix and rectify. Now, the floor in one of these isn't uh, a structural part of the boat. It is uh, merely sort of a, uh, a false floor over the top when it has bearers underneath uh, and which are connected to the hull. So it's not a structural part. Um, I'm a complete amateur at this sort of thing, um, but part of making this video um, to sort of document the process that I go through is to hopefully others can learn from my mistakes. Um, I'll make the mistakes so you guys don't have to. And um, just to give people the confidence to give, give these things a go, because at the, the end of the day, um, this, this could cost um, up to about a thousand pounds to get someone professionally in to do. Whereas I'd like to think that um, not only is the, is the cost involved, um, but also gaining knowledge about the boat um, as I go and just checking everything as I go and make sure everything is good and to a high standard because at the end of the day, um, it won't be the uh, the guy I pay the money to to fix the floor that will be uh, 12 or so miles off the off the front and in the sea uh, if, if a problem does happen. So if something does happen, I wanna know how to fix it and um, hopefully you can learn, learn and we can go together. Looking uh, from the bow to the stern, you can see the, the fishing area is quite large on these boats. It's one of the main benefits of having an Alaska 500. Um, and the floor in this section from from here to about there you can see the bearers you can see the protruding bits running along either side that's actually the bearers coming off the hull I believe um, but obviously I'll confirm that we might cut it out if necessary we've got the two buoyancy tanks there and there at the back ideally I'd like to take um, the buoyancy from there and lay it under the floor and that would then free up the space there and there for extra storage whether auxiliary motor or fuel tank or whatever um, I, can, I can use that um, but if we have a look at the floor to start off with obviously if we come down this side that's rock solid in here nothing is moving there at all all right that is the bearer underneath there but if you come off the bearer I'll put you there you can see there is flex quite a bit of flex in the floor all right It's a little bit unnatural cutting a hole in the bottom of a boat for me to be honest but it is something that does need to be done in order to find the root of the problem just cut around there that's nice right now we're starting to see a bit of the floor and that to me looks a little bit wet Sadly, the uh, the dream, the pipe dream of just having to re redo the floor, I think has come to a fairly uh, fairly quick end. Cut out a little bit with the blade, and uh, the fiberglass underneath is just sorry, the plywood underneath is just pulling away. Um, and look at that, that is that is squidgy. So uh, yeah, that's got to come out before we go any further. There's no point putting anything decent or a new bit of ply over the top of that because that's just going to rot that away as well and that'll be the end of it so. oh well one of the problems i'm going to have now is uh, i've got no idea how actually wide the the bearers are so i've come up to the side of a bearer um, and i think the only way i can do it is give it a good a good uh, couple of inches and then drill the other side of it just to make sure i'm going straight through into uh, into sort of one of the voids rather than into one of the bearers so um We'll see how we go. 
So the bearer is just there. So I'm assuming it's gonna be no wider than that. So I'm gonna go with a good, good estimate that the bearer, let's say it's fair that it finishes there. And the, the other bearer is here. We can see that it's raised and there's a void here. So I'm assuming I'll drill a hole here and all will be okay. We'll hopefully go straight through to a void. So let's find out, but it is a bit trial and error. Good news. Straight through and into another void. So I know that I can now cut there and cut another section out. There we have it, there's the width of one of the bearers. I was quite out with my estimation, quite out by a long way to be honest. This must be the sort of the adhesive stuff that they've used to, that is, almost feels concretey, but I assume they haven't put concrete in the bottom of the boat. It's too heavy to be foam, I'm not sure what it is, but oh well, it's not here anymore. In the bucket it goes. probably taken me 10 minutes to uh, take away the bulk of that. Uh, just cutting off the top layer of fiberglass and then just just pulling away at this really. So it's, it's really no hardship just to pull that away um, and, and see what's underneath. Uh, good news is these are good and dry. The middle ones, not quite so much. So we'll have to see if it's possible, if they're still solid, if they're solid enough, um, or if there's any way of drying them out, if not, be a case of knocking those out as well, which uh, just adds to the fun, doesn't it? However, I'm now reaching something that resembles plywood that is dry and structurally sound. So the floor's not moving as much here. The fiberglass is still attached to the floor um, and the marine ply or the ply, whatever they've used before, is harder. However, it, there is still movement there. So I think while I'm here, that's all gonna come out as well. Um, I was gonna hope to make it nice and square to make it easy to cut back in. However, um, yeah, I think that moment's gone. And we'll just uh, just cut out what we have to and uh, see where we go. But yeah, it's coming out easy enough. No worries at all. Okay, so I've cut out um, vaguely towards the back there. I wanna keep um, that, I need a bit of love on the way through. But there's another strength bearer there. Um, and I will need to work out what I'm gonna do along here. So in that time, I'm also going to work out what I'm going to do with these rear boxes. So I need to find out what's inside them, and if it's foam or uh, something like that, then I will need to obviously replace that. But ideally, I'm going to drill in and find an air void, but I don't know. So I've taken a chunk off here. This is the rear um, buoyancy. Yes, it's full of foam, but the foam is pretty ancient and very waterlogged. You see there's even puddles of water. That's quite deep. I mean, that's half a finger depth in there. So don't know what sort of weight there is. All this wood came off because that's all rotten. So yeah, not a great deal left to be honest. Um, final design plan on that, I don't know. It'll be a case of getting it out and then having a think from there, I think, but we'll see how we get on. Okay, so we're sort of reaching uh, a natural finish to uh, th this part of the video. Uh, I've done the bulk of the cutting out of the rotten. I've ended up cutting out a bit more than I expected to. However, by the time you get into it, it's it's far easier, I imagine, just to cut out the rot while you're there and just do a, do a job once and, and do it well. Um, I've got rid of the two water tanks at the back, um, there and there. And, uh, um, I'm going to see a very helpful fiberglass company um, on Saturday morning 
and they're going to give me some advice on the fiberglassing. They've, they've worked out the area, etc., and um, the extra weight of the fiberglass, um, and hopefully we can get that all ordered. And, well, I've got it ordered, and hopefully we'll get that picked up. Um, also ordered my marine ply, my floor. Um, I'm thinking, uh, depending on the way the cuts go, I should be able to do it with one um, old money eight before marine ply sheet. Um, I'm going to use nine mil, which is what on the, is on the floor already. Um, so that would be easier to tie in. And actually, I'm feeling quite good about it. Um, despite the fact my boat looks more of a rotten bathtub than a, than a boat, um, you know, it, it's, it's okay. There's uh, it's, the whole sound, the um, stringers or the bearers uh, are sound, everything's sound. Um, and really, it's just getting rid of the rot, which is adding extra weight and, and putting a good bit of flooring down. Mm -hmm.